Thank you for choosing to watch this video. This is going to be the most educational video on mattresses you can find on the internet. Hello, my name is Lee Carter and I'm president of Sleep Essentials. Now hopefully you're seeing this video on my website. In other words, you're already on my website, buildyourownmattress.com. If not, let me encourage you to uh, click away from the video you're seeing and go to buildyourownmattress.com because when you log on, a video is going to start playing and I'm going to introduce you to everything you need to know. I'm going to introduce you to the, the website and then I'm going to refer you to the video you're seeing right now. Um, but while you're on the website, it's gonna, you'll see what I'm talking about in this video. But anyway, I want to get a few things out of the way first before we get started in the mattress education video. And I'm going to teach you, tell you a few things about my website. Now, if you cruise around on the website, buildyourownmatch.com, you're going to notice something a little strange. It says, and everything that you click on, every product, mattress materials or adjustable beds or whatever, sheets or whatever, you're going to notice it says, uh, to sale today only, 99% off. Now, that may be a little confusing to some people. Let me explain. The mattress industry, and this is what this, this video is about, this video is about teaching you about the mattress industry. And the mattress industry is notorious for having sales. You know, if, you're, if you live in a, in a town or a city, you can drive into the city and you'll see your mattress stores, and a lot of times, like once or twice a month, they have signs out front that says 50 to 80% off sale this weekend only, or the Black Friday sale, or the... Uh, uh, President's Day sale, those type things, okay? You have to understand the industry marks it up before they mark it down to convince you you're getting a good deal. Well, my website is my own unique creation. And so what I'm doing is, is I'm making fun of this. So I'm basically claiming, look, they have 50% off, but I have 99% off. So this adjustable bed is normally $200,000 but you can get it today only for $2,000. That, that's what I'm doing, that's what I'm illustrating. So don't be alarmed when you see 99% off. There is no such thing as a, a true sale in the mattress industry. They always mark it up before they mark it down. I mean, think about it. Have you ever wondered when you saw the sign that says 80% off, don't you feel sorry for the guy that bought it the week before the sale and paid 80 percentage points too much? <laughs> you know, poor sap got ripped off. If he just waited another week, he could have gotten 80% off of that. Well, it, that, that never happens. Uh, now, I could give you an illust couple, several, a couple of illustrations of that. You know, when my wife and I first got married, we're, we're newlyweds, and we bought our first home. We moved to our first home. She took over the closet. I needed a wardrobe. So we went searching for a wardrobe at a furniture store, um, you know, and we were trying to find something that matched what we already had, the nice stands and laundry chest that we already had. And we found a wardrobe that matched perfectly at this furniture store. And of course, money was very tight. We just bought a new house. We, you know, things were really, really tight for us. So I said, you know, let's take our time. We might find something a little cheaper somewhere else. Let's keep shopping. Well, that was like during the week. By the weekend, there was advertised on TV that this furniture store was having a store-wide sale. So I told my wife, I was like, well, let's go back and get it. Uh, you know, everything on sale, let's go back and get it. We'll get a little bit off on it. Well, when we went in there, it had a, this same wardrobe. We went over to it. It had this bright, beautiful sale sign on it. The price was higher. The industry is full of deception. And so I'm deceiving you on my website, but I'm doing it in such a blatant way that it's pretty obvious that I'm making an illustration of the absurdity uh, that, that it's going on in the mattress industry. And to give you another example, I had a man come in, he bought a foam, memory foam mattress at some local uh, furniture chain. And it didn't last but about four years, I think it was four or five years, that's memory foam, that's the life of memory foam, which by the way I'm going to teach you about. And he came in because he heard of my latex mattresses. And uh, he was telling me, he goes, well, you know, that mattress didn't last four or five years, but uh, I don't feel too bad because I got a really, really good deal on it. And uh, when he told me where he got it from and that it was memory foam, I said, was it made by Spring Air? And he said, yeah. I said, do you know what model it was? He goes, I don't remember. I said, what did it look like? So he described it. And I was like, yeah, I recognize that. That was the Sleep Fitness 307. He goes, yeah, that's it. That's the one. He goes, yeah, I got it half off. It was normally $3,200. I got it for $1,600. And I said, sir, I hate to break this to you, but 
I sold it every day for $1,600. So this is what they do. They mark it up before they mark it down. Mine is 99% off. My adjustable bed for $200,000 you can get for $2,000. Isn't that great? So I don't want you to be alarmed when you look at the website. I hope you find it humorous because I'm illustrating the absurdity. And you're going to like this because I'm going to do all of this exposing of this dirty, rotten, filthy, disgusting business in this video. Okay? Now, one of the first things I want to talk to you about is something that in all of my videos I've done in the past, I usually say to the end. I'm going to talk to you about this in the beginning. And the reason is because I want to capture your attention. I think this is the most important subject when talking about mattresses. So instead of putting it at the end of my video, I'm going to talk about this in the beginning of my video. Okay, I'm going to talk about the fire retardant chemicals that are used in mattresses that make people sick. They're toxic. Later on in the video, I'm going to teach you about uh, marketing gimmicks, sales gimmicks, which I've already illustrated, uh, warranty gimmicks. I'm going to teach you about cheap materials that, are, that, are, that, that cannot and will not last. I'm going to teach you about quality materials. And then, then I'm going to teach you about what I'm doing on buildyourownmattress.com. Okay? So first thing, fire retardant chemicals in mattresses. This began in 2007. The Consumer Product Safety Commission began requiring in 2000, July 2007 that all mattresses sold in the United States must be essentially flame proof. Now that sounds like a really good feature. Uh, you know, they're trying to save us from mattress fires, right? Wrong. They are making the chemical industry and large mattress manufacturers hordes of money at the consumer's expense. Now let me show that to you. Now, the Consumer Product Safety Commission lists the chemicals that the mattress industry will be using to make their mattress flame retardant. I have a copy of their report. This says, potential health effects from the use of fire retardant chemicals in mattresses. Now I'm going to read to you in here what they say about these chemicals. The first chemical they list is ammonium polyphosphate. It says here there's no available data on subchronic or chronic exposures, pharmacokinetics, carcinogenity, reproductive development or neurological effects. In other words, they're admitting to you they have no clue how that's going to affect your health, but mattress manufacturers are using them to make their mattress flame retardant. The next chemical listed is antimony trioxide. Now, antimony is heavy metal and it's more toxic than mercury. And it says here, antimony trioxide would be considered toxic under the Federal Hazardous Substance Act. Next one listed here is boric acid. Now, boric acid is probably the least toxic of all the chemicals that could be used. Boric acid is commonly used as roach killer. And notice it says here, boric acid meets the definition of toxic under the Federal Hazardous Substance Act. So they're admitted to you it's toxic. The next is deca bromodiphenyl oxide. It's called deca for short. It's a bromide. It's a brominated chemical. Very important to know because I'm going to talk to you about that in a little bit more detail later on. Notice it says here, deca bromodiphenyl oxide meets the definition of toxic under the Federal Hazardous Substance Act by virtue of its chronic organ system toxicity. It's chronically toxic to your thyroid. Okay? Keep that in mind. I'm going to show you some stuff about that. Next one is melamine. Melamine is considered acutely toxic. Now, back in uh, five or ten years ago, there was pet food coming from China that, would kill, that was killing people's pets. Well, that was melamine that was in the pet food that was toxic. It's acutely toxic. It was killing people's pets. Next one is violin chloride. Notice it says here, violin chloride is considered toxic under the Federal Hazardous Substance Act. Now, there's one chemical not listed in here, which I think is uh, revealing that they didn't list it, is formaldehyde. Now, formaldehyde we know is a carcinogen. I had a gentleman come to me who bought a big brand name, memory foam mattress. I'm not going to mention the names because I can't prove that his mattress had formaldehyde in it, so I won't mention the name. But uh, when he came in my store, he saw my sign out on the street that said chemical free mattress. So he came in asking me questions. And he said he bought this mattress, they delivered it to his house, they set it up, and immediately, without even sleeping on it, the toxic fumes began to make him sick. He gets headaches, nausea, shaking from exposure to formaldehyde. He said the symptoms he's getting from exposure to this mattress is the same as he gets when he's, allergic, when he's exposed to formaldehyde. And I said, well, Mr. Poole, as a matter of fact, formaldehyde is a known flame retardant chemical. He said, well, that just makes me angry. I bought a product and I didn't know what was in it. And I would never have bought that if I had known it was formaldehyde in it. 
Now, the Consumer Product Safety Commission regulating these mattresses, does they did not require mattress manufacturers to disclose what they use. It would be very simple to put on the law label of a mattress, you know, because the law label lists the materials that are used, like if it's latex, if it's polyurethane, if it's cotton, if it's wool, it has to be listed on the law label. They could simply require manufacturers to disclose what chemicals they use, but they didn't. Are they looking out for the consumer? <laughs> Just wait and see. You're going to find out that no, they are not looking out for the consumer, okay? Remember I mentioned brominated chemicals. Now, uh, it's toxic to your thyroid. Now, I have an article here written by uh, Dr. Mercola. Mercola is a health specialist, uh, uh, a naturopathic type health specialist on the internet. Notice this article says, avoid this if you want to keep your thyroid healthy. Bromides are a common endocrine disruptor. And then on the back side of this it says, fire retardants used in fabrics, carpets, upholstery, and mattresses. So there is some evidence that not only does the Consumer Product Safety Commission admit that the brominated chemical is toxic to your organs, it's specifically toxic to your thyroid. Okay? Now, I'm using Consumer Product Safety Commission's own report to show you that this is toxic stuff. But let me show you something else in their own report. This is a chart for antimony trioxide, which is heavy metal, boric acid, which is roach killer, and decabromodiphenoxide. So three of those chemicals I've listed, uh, they are showing here in a chart that shows absorption rates. So ADD stands for average daily dose from sweat dermal absorption, oral ingestion, inhalation, for total. 0.8 milligrams of antimony, heavy metal, more toxic than mercury, every night. 0.08 milligrams of boric acid, which is roast killer, and 0.07 milligrams of the stuff that destroys your thyroid. Now in the back of the report, they claim you don't absorb it enough to make you sick. Here's what you have to understand, though. Not only did the Consumer Product Safety Commission not require them to disclose what chemicals they use, they also didn't regulate how much chemical they put in the mattresses. So a mattress could be overdosed, making the chart I just read to you irrelevant. Now, I have a specific case uh, of people that have gotten several specific cases of people getting sick from mattresses. And they write me testimonials. I've talked to hundreds of people now in the last, uh, what's that, 12 years. This woman writes me a testimonial. My tongue hurts, it's kind of itchy, sort of tingly, and definitely not right. It's not just my tongue that hurts. My lips feel prickly and swollen, and the back of my throat has blisters on it. My mouth problems began about four months ago when my husband and I treated ourselves to one of those super cushy mattress toppers. We unwrapped the foam portion uh, of the mattress and cover. It had a very strong chemical smell because the paperwork explained that the strong odor upon opening was normal. We didn't worry too much about it. My mouth issues began the very first night of evening of off-gassing, okay? Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there's a testimonial that somebody has bought a new mattress making them sick. I'm just scratching the surface. Bear with me. <clears throat> Another testimonial, Jeannie. Uh, Lee, as we discussed on the telephone, because I was searching for what may be causing me to feel so ill after purchasing two different mattresses at Mattress Firm, I convinced it is a chemical burn reaction to toxins. She writes at length. Um, I honestly, this is Brenda, I honestly do not know what exactly I've been reacting to in the new mattress, but it certainly severe and leaves me unable to breathe without medication. I mean, the first night of moving into a, sep a spare bedroom recently, an ancient mattress, I could breathe again. So her new mattress, she can't breathe, goes to the old mattress, doesn't have chemicals, she's fine. Next lady, her name is Cheryl. Uh, I purchased a mattress from a major bedding manufacturer two months ago in the fall of 2008. It was a wonderful, comfortable plush top. I love the comfort of, it. How comfort of it. However, the first night I was so sick from the off-gassing, I woke up in the middle of the night horribly nauseated, coughing up lots of material out of my lungs. It happened the second night, too. She elaborates. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Uh, this woman, uh, Lisa, writes, My children had an immediate skin reaction in a furniture store while we were looking at mattresses standing next to and not touching the small layers core sample showing what a Tempur-Pedic mattress was made of. Okay? Uh, that's just what she writes. Uh, and I've got numerous of these. I'm just reading you a few of them. 
In late summer, I purchased a cushy plush mattress. It was super comfortable, but within a few days, I noticed that I felt rashy. The rashes began, became progressively worse until my skin was red all over. After two weeks of trying to sleep on the mattress, I gave up 3 a.m. in the morning and went to sleep on our guest bedroom because I could not stand the burning and itch anymore. Fortunately, the company for whom I purchased the mattress allowed me to return it. After sleeping in the guest room for a couple of weeks, the rashes disappeared. All right, now these are testimonials that people have given me. But here is a piece of evidence that is two more pieces of evidence that's extremely alarming. I got a phone call from a customer from Illinois. Her name is Rachel. Uh, take a moment to listen to her, t her uh, uh, voicemail. Hi, my name is Rachel and I've been watching some of your videos. Um, I have a permanent neurological and inhalant injury from uh, exposure to high levels in my mattress and I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to understand a little bit more about the industry. If you would be gracious enough to give me a call back um, and chat with me a little bit, that would be really great. 630. Thank you so much. All right, after that voicemail, I called her back and Rachel and I talked at length. And this is what she told me. She bought a big brand name, one of the biggest brand name mattresses you could buy. And she started to have severe fatigue issues and memory loss. And she said she realized she had a problem one time when her children were standing in front of her and she couldn't remember their names. She went to doctor after doctor after doctor, blood work, tests and stuff. The doctor started telling her she must be crazy. A girlfriend of hers told her, why don't you go get a a hair analysis done where they send your hair off it tests to see what uh, foreign material chemicals substances are in your body she did that and when she got the re report back it showed a very high level of antimony now I've already mentioned antimony is one of the fire retardant chemicals that the Consumer Product Safety Commission admits are toxic of course Rachel didn't know what antimony was, so she did a little research on the internet and found out that it's a fire retardant chemical that can be used in mattresses. So light goes off. It's the mattress she's sleeping in the last, I think, year, year and a half. So she immediately stopped sleeping in the mattress. And she sent a sample of the mattress off to get a test for antimony. came back positive. So while I'm talking to her, so Rachel, do you know how much antimony is in it? She says no. She just did a screen test for antimony and it came back positive. I said, well, you we need to know how much is in it. Would you send me a sample of that mattress? And she did. This is a sample of it. Now, I kind of want to show you this one. Uh, I've already had this tested, so I really don't need to have it wrapped in aluminum. Um, it basically was your, your upholstered material on top of foam. And this is the sample she sent me. So I know a little bit about mattresses the fire retardant chemicals are on this little mesh barrier that's underneath the, the top fabric. So I took a piece of this mesh foam, mesh cloth, it's polyester, and sent it to a lab and had it tested for antimony and got test results back, back positive but with uh, a quantitative value. This is a copy of the test. Uh, and of course I paid for this. Notice here in the chart it says top layers of mattress fire barrier and it's uh, antimony results average 1757 parts per million. Now that doesn't mean a whole lot. That just gives us a quantitative value. Well, if you, if you spend any time uh, searching mat mattresses online, you're probably going to run into some mattress company that claims that they have a Certi Pure certification on their mattresses. Now what that is, is that Certi Pure, now this is Certi Pure here, if you can see their logo, Certi Pure certifies the cleanliness, the, the lack of volatile organic compounds and ke toxic chemicals and substances in foam, not the whole mattress. But mattress companies use this certification to sort of give the consumer the impression their mattress is certainly pure certified so it's good and clean right well again like I said in this the, the the toxic chemicals are not in the foam the toxic chemicals are in this fire barrier sock fabric 
But anyway, CertiPure certifies an upper limit on safety for antimony. Here's their chart. Notice it says antimony. Guide limit parts per million, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 parts per million or less is safe. Above that, CertiPure says is not safe. Now, I'm just going off of their data. So, Rachel's mattress said 1,750 parts per million. That's 3,500 times the level of antimony that is considered safe. It's no wonder Rachel is sick. Now, the Consumer Product Safety Commission claims that the, the chemicals stay bound to and inside the mattress and do not get into the consumer. Knowing this, I decided to send the top fabric of the mattress off to get it. You can see where I cut it out right there, uh, the little square that's cut out there. I sent it off to have it tested to find out how much antimony is in the top fabric. In other words, how much has gotten out of the sock into the surface materials. And I know it's there because I know where Rachel's getting it, but I need to know a quantitative value, right? All right, here is the chart for top layers of mattress fire barrier, which really wasn't the fire barrier, the, the lab didn't write it up right. But anyway, the top layer says 207 parts per million. That's still 400 times the level of antimony than CertiPure considers safe. It's no wonder Rachel is sick. Uh, she has, she kept her mattress to, to possibly sue the company that, she, that made the mattress. She has had no luck. She's been working on, she's from Illinois, she's been working on her state legislature to get them to pass uh, regulations on how much chemicals, or I take that back, to eliminate the use of chemicals in mattresses within the state of Illinois. Um, that's an ongoing process. Now, the Consumer Product Safety Commission well, you know, why did they do this? Why did they regulate mattresses to be flame retardant if it means we're sleeping in chemicals? Now, I want to show you that because the things that this Consumer Product Safety Commission is claiming is not true. They're claiming, as you've, I've already illustrated, the chemicals stay bound to the mattress and don't get out. They don't get into you. Uh, they did not require labeling requirements so that you as a consumer know what you're getting when you're buying. Uh, they did not require a limit on how much chemicals the companies use. So like Rachel's mattress, it's overdosed. Okay? Now, when I first started learning about the fire retardant chemicals, you know, I was making my own mattresses, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. And I knew I had to get my mattresses compliant with these fire regulations back in 2007. So in, in doing my research, I discovered something. Now this is an article written in Furniture Today in 2007, a month and a half before the new law went into effect. And it says here, top 100 store chain WS Badcock said today it will close its bedding factory rather than make a major expansion that will be required to meet the new federal flammability regulations. Okay, so they're closing their shop. The next paragraph. Badcock said it will begin outsourcing all mattress manufactured to International Bedding Corp, a top 10 bedding producer. So you have a small mattress company that's going out of business and farming out that business to a, a, a top 10 producer. So I began to think, you know, maybe, maybe it's designed to destroy small companies on behalf of big companies. Well, made sense. There was another article, though, in newsreview.com. They're interviewing Richard Lash. This was also written in 6 of 07, so right before the law went into effect. And it says here, uh, Richard Lash, the uh, co-owner of Square Deal Mattress Factory in Chico, California. And it says here, Square, Square Deal uh, made an effort to find fire barrier made from natural materials. That turned out to be a layer of batting of, out of wool, inherently fire resistant, and a blend of other natural fibers that goes just underneath the mattress. The only potentially dangerous chemical, now I want you to understand something, there's going to be companies that claim they use wool. We use wool to meet our flame standards, it's all natural. This guy is admitting that he's using wool and dangerous, uh, the potentially dangerous chemical in Square Deal's bear, uh, fire bears is boric acid, roach killer. Now on the back page of this article it says, 
The new fire standards will cost mattress manufacturers more than 100 billion, 100 million per year to implement. It's the most expensive change the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has ever made. The cost will be too much for some small companies to absorb, Lash said. He's confident of his own factory survival, but he's concerned the codes will be the death of other small companies. Next paragraph. There are currently only 600 mattress manufacturers in the United States, and the new safety codes could eliminate a third of them. Now, what happened was, when I was learning about this, I found out that the International Sleep Products Association is an association, a lobby group, that represents large mattress manufacturers. And they supported this new fire retardant barrier, uh, a fire retardant requirement in mattresses. And I'm thinking, why would mattresses be interested in that? That's crazy. It's going to cost them more money. Well, if you're a large mattress manufacturer, you can absorb the cost and eliminate a third of your competition. So it's not designed to make mattresses flame retardant. It's designed to make large mattress manufacturers more money. Now, I want you to understand something else. It goes further. But I want you to understand something else. The mattresses are required to be flame retardant. Sheets, blankets, and pillows are not required to be flame-proof. What good is a flame-proof mattress if your sheets, blankets, and pillows still burn? Now, the Consumer Body Safety Commission claims, this is their lie, it's a bold-faced lie, that they're making mattresses flame-retardant to make it safe for consumers in case of a house fire, the mattress is no longer a source of fuel for the fire to spread. And that gives the consumer, the, the, the American people, more time to get out of their house in case of a fire because the mattress doesn't burn very quick now. Well, let's use a, use a little logic. Most people die of smoke inhalation. And most, mat, most fires do not start in the bedroom. They start at a heat source, an electrical source, maybe in the basement or the kitchen. By the time it spreads to the, the bedroom and catches the mattress on fire, you're dead from the smoke. Making mattresses flame retardant does not help the consumer. But as I've shown, it does help a large mattress manufacturers by eliminating their competition. Now, I've done videos on, videos on this in the past, and they're published on YouTube. And I had a man call me from a factory, a chemical factory. He said, I saw your video, and I just want to straighten you out on a few things. These chemicals are not that toxic. Well, he's a chemical manufacturer. He's not going to admit they're toxic. But in the, and I talked to him for about an hour. In the process of talking to him, he admitted that he's a member of the International Sleep Products Association. Man, a light went off in my head. The chemical industry stands to make bukus of money by these regulations. So large mattress manufacturers and chemical manufacturers, both are members of ISPA. ISPA supported the fire chart regulations. The regulations are not going to help us, but they will make you sick, as countless people have, have, have uh, uh, witness to me about called me on the phone sent me emails and Rachel okay now I want to give you one more example that I think is a shocking example I've already mentioned it in the introductory uh, video on the website uh, I've already mentioned it once I'm going to go ahead and mention it again in this video just in case you're somebody who's watching this video and hasn't seen the introductory video on my website I got a phone call here says Six months ago, from a lady uh, who bought a big brand name, big brand name, memory foam mattress. And this is the testimonial she wrote me. First of all, thanks so much for what you're doing in the for the public. I'm so very much in support of your efforts to make truly natural mattresses of high quality that are reasonably priced. My family has personal experience with toxic effects of chemical laid mattresses. I purchased a memory foam mattress from a big, ba big name company in 2003. Nine years later, when my daughter was seven years old at the time, started sleeping on this mattress, she began a rapid onset of rapidly progressing early puberty. Uh, I'm going to skip some of this. This all happened in a space of a couple months. It took a little while for us to suspect the mattress, but once we took her off the mattress and put her on an organ organic one, the progression stopped very quickly and we saw some regression from the point she was at that time. She's almost 14 now and has progressed through a normal natural puberty because we realized that she was being poisoned by that mattress. 
And of course she did a little research and found an article by the National Institutes of Health. Let me read to you this article. 3D images show flame retardants can mimic estrogen. By determining, by determining the three-dimensional structure of proteins at the atomic level, researchers at the National Institutes of Health have discovered how some commonly used flame retardants called brominated, do you remember me mentioning deca diphenyl oxide in the list of chemicals by the Consumer Product Safety Commission, that it's destructive of your organs, it's your thyroid, uh, can mimic estrogen hormones and possibly disrupt the body's endocrine system. So no wonder this little girl is developing puberty at age 7. Can you imagine what it could be doing to countless young boys? The chem Let me make something very, very clear for you. The Consumer Product Safety Commission does not look out for consumers. They are looking out for whoever's paying them under the table. They are an unelected body of people that do not represent the American public. We pay taxes to fund Consumer Product Safety Commission. It's board members that are appointed by the president for, I think, a term of seven years. They sit on this board and create regulations, and they create regulations for the benefit of, in this case, large mattress manufacturers in the chemical industry. Okay? And then the Consumer Product Safety Commission says, well, we're trying to make mattress flame retardant for your safety. Let me tell you, they're... They're shoving tree limbs up our rear ends and telling us they're suppositories and they're good for us. Okay? The reason I'm telling you all this is because when I became aware of it and I began producing my own mattresses, the Consumer Product Safety Commission does allow in their regulation a, a loophole. If a doctor prescribes chemical-free mattresses, then it's legal for me to sell one. Now, after many years of making and selling mattresses by prescription, as my business has grown, it's gotten way too complicated and difficult to acquire prescriptions. You know, some people don't have doctors. Some doctors won't sign it. So 10% of my customers can't buy a chemical-free mattress because they don't have a doctor or can't get their doctor to sign the prescription. So a light went off in my head. I was like, there's a better way to skin this cat. So let me, let me get into that a little bit later. Uh, what I'm doing, buildyourownmattress.com is a way of dancing around the stupid regulations so you don't have to have fire retardant chemicals or you don't have to get a prescription, okay? Now the Consumer Product Safety Commission, I just want to finish off by explaining something to the public that, that's near and dear to my heart on this subject. You know, we've, we in our history classes when we were growing up heard of taxation without representation. Okay, uh, The American colonists went to war with England because the English Parliament would pass regulations and taxes on the colonies, and the colonies had no representatives in Parliament. They said, foul, that's foul. You're taxing us and regulating us without representation. So when we won the Revolutionary War and, and framed our own government, our own uh, Constitution, Article 1, Section 1 of the Constitution says all legislative power is vested in Congress. That's your representative body. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is not a representative body. So we are now experiencing regulation without representation. If they don't represent us, who are they representing? It's pretty obvious by now. Okay? That is, I think, the most important thing you need to know as a consumer about mattresses. Now I'm going to change gears here. I want to talk to you now about marketing gimmicks, sales gimmicks, warranty gimmicks, and what is a quality product. Okay. Now my, my, my business started out as a mattress retail showroom store in Roanoke, Virginia. And I sold the big brand name mattresses. I also had the largest selection of memory foam mattresses like Tempur-Pedic and, and all the uh, hundreds of knockoffs, okay? And I had to learn the hard way. Everything that I'm teaching you in this video, by the way, is stuff I've had to learn the hard way. Now, um, 
I've got copies of warranties that I want to read to you because there's something you need to understand about mattresses. The most used material in mattresses today is polyurethane foam. And polyurethane foam is plastic. You can look it up on the internet, research it. Polyurethane foam is plastic. The chief characteristic of all plastic foam is that it softens substantially with use. Now, I'm going to start at the top and then give you many, many examples. If you've seen some of my other videos, I, I read uh, countless numbers of warranties showing these mattresses that are made of polyurethane foam that they soften. I've got a copy of Tempur-Pedic's warranty. Tempur-Pedic is, the, as far as I know, the first memory foam. They're considered the best. They do have higher grade polyurethane than some of your cheap knockoffs, but it's still polyurethane. It's still plastic. Now they have a 20 year warranty. Notice it says in the fine print, it is understood this limited warranty does not include a normal increase in softness of the temper pressure of the material. So they admitting to it soften and softens, it's not covered under warranty. Well, if it takes 20 years to soften, that wouldn't be so bad, right? Let's look at how quickly they soften. I've got a couple of e-pinion reports or e-pinions. E-pinions is a place where people used to write in about the products they buy. And, uh, it's basically turned into an advertising website, but anyway, it used to be a real nice website, but I, I pulled a couple of testimonials off of ePinions uh, several years ago. This woman writes, breaks down too quickly, avoid. I was a die-hard tempur fan with the emphasis on was. Count on the bed lasting for about four years only. My husband, my husband and I are both thin and his side started softening, there's the key word, after four years softening after four years. Uh, the next lady writes, tempur did not last, not worth the money. For the first four years on the mattress, I loved it. I'm now six months in the fifth year and I'm very disappointed. So something changed in her mattress. She didn't elaborate that it got softer. As it softens, it loses its support. The key to good back support and good sleep is to sleep flat. As the foam softens, it softens mostly where you weigh the most in the middle, it's going to create a hammock effect. You're going to be sleeping in a curve all night, okay? And it's going to lose its supports. These polyurethane foam mattresses don't last very long. Now, when I first got started in the business, I had, a, I, I think, was the largest selection of memory foam mattresses in Roanoke, Virginia at the time, because I thought this was the, the, the new stuff, the, the greatest thing in the world. Uh, and I sold a, an off-brand named Dormia. Uh, Dormia is not made anymore. Uh, this is a Dormia demo unit. This thing has been around for 14 years or something. Uh, this is your memory foam. This is your base foam. It's quick recovery polyurethane. All of this is plastic. Just so you'll know that I'm not picking on Tempur-Pedic, I'm simply teaching you the, the properties of polyurethane foam. I have a copy of Dormia's warranty. 25 year limited warranty. Notice it says, it is understood that this does not include a normal increase in softness in the foam. So in other words, they admitted to you it softens as well. Okay. Uh, also notice it says, it does not include a deterioration of the foam with an indentation of less than 1.9 tenths of an inch. So you have to have a two inch permanent body impression in the mattress before it's covered under warranty. The two things that are gonna go wrong with a memory foam mattress are not covered in the fine print of the warranty. So your warranty now is nothing but a sales gimmick. The mattress manufacturers know that most people don't read the fine print. And even if they did, they may not, may not recognize the legalese language prevents you from understanding it. But when you call them after two or three years and complain about them getting softer, they're going to say, sorry, it's not covered under warranty. And I learned this the hard way. Now, I used to sell big brand name mattresses and inner spring type mattresses. I didn't know what I was doing. I, I was a machinist before I did this. And I was relying on my mattress manufacturer's reps to teach me about the industry, teach me about the product. Now, I, I hadn't been in, in business three or four months and some friends of mine came to me to buy a big, thick mattress. That thing was about 16, 18 inches thick. It had this huge pillow top on it. And within six months, it had a huge dip in it. And they come back to see me and they said, this mattress got a huge dip. And this was my learning experience. And so I said, well, okay, let me, let me talk to my manufacturer's rest, probably covered under warranty. I called him and told him about it. He says, yeah, well, well, if it's gotta be deeper than an inch and a half. Now the industry average dip in the mattress has to be deeper than an inch and a half. 
let me tell you something you're going to be very dissatisfied with your mash by the time it gets half that deep three quarters of an inch they're covering themselves okay but anyway he went and looked at this mattress and and whether or not it had an inch and a half i don't know but he agreed because they were friends of mine to replace it uh six months this mattress had huge dips in it and the pro the problem is the polyurethane foam the cheap plastic foam and it's the most used material in the mattress industry. Today, the online-only mattress phenomenon is a phenomenon of pure, unadulterated, dirt-cheap plastic foam. And it's so inexpensive to make, they can afford, uh, you know, to give you an example, a queen-size memory foam online-only mattress company. You know, pick one. There's 100 of them. There's 200 of them, okay? Cost about $100 to produce. They sell it to you for somewhere in the net range of uh, $1,000, $800, $900, $1,000. So the margin is huge, and they don't have any overhead because they don't have any showrooms. Now, obviously, they know that um, you, you know, you're not likely to buy a mattress you haven't tried, so they give you the 100-day in-home trial. If you don't like it, you can get your money back, but you have to donate the mattress to a, a nonprofit so they can write that off. If 20 or 25% of the customers send the mattresses back, they still make money because they can just donate those mattresses, write it off, and the margin's so high on the ones that you keep. The problem to the consumer is the mattress don't last a year to two years, it's got huge dips in it. They know you don't know that. They know you don't, you as the consumer don't sleep, don't read the fine print of the warranty. So it's a statistical game. They win, you lose. Okay? Um, now that we've learned that polyurethane foam softens with use, let me show you a few gimmicks in the mattress industry. Uh, one of the uh, large mattress companies that I sold was Spring Air. I have a, I have a demo unit by Spring Air. Uh, a little demo to demonstrate what the mattress looks like inside. This is the marketing material inside here. First thing I want you to notice, it says here, the Never Turn Mattress. What that is, is, is they're advertising, you no longer have to flip our mattresses over anymore. Isn't that nice? Well, the truth is there's no upholstery on the bottom side. You couldn't flip it over if you wanted to. You can't sleep on the other side. It's, it's, it's flat and hard. So what they've done is, is that they've cut the costs of putting upholstery on the bottom side. Then they spin it to use if they made you a better product. You, don't know, you no longer have to flip it over. The goal in these large corporate mattress companies to make it cheaper, 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 and market it to you as if they made you a better product. Well, now you'll probably run into some slick salesman who's going to tell you, well, what we did, and this is what my mattress manufacturer up said to me, he said, well, what we did was we took the expense of the upholstery materials on the bottom side and put higher grade materials on the top side. So it's no longer turnable and it's got higher grade foams, higher grade materials on the top side. So it's a more durable mattress, same as if it was two, if it was two sided. But I can tell you from experience in selling these mattresses, I'd have people complain about them within a year or two years having huge dips in them. They didn't put better materials on the one side, that's a lie. They just lie through their teeth. Now, I've already taught you that polyurethane foam softens. Notice also in this demo unit, it says foam encased wireless edge provides comfort and support uh, from edge to edge, uh, creates a superior sitting edge. Okay? And what they're referring to is this plastic foam, three inch foam board around the outside edge of the spring unit. Now, I've already proven to you that polyurethane foam softens. So if you sit on the edge of this bed every morning and, and get dressed, uh, watch TV, put your shoes on, after a few years, you're going to soften it to it that it no longer has a firm sitting edge. Well, sure enough, I sold one of these mattresses to a lady, um, foam and case, this exact mattress. And she was an elderly woman. She was on oxygen. She probably smoked when she was young. She's very immobile. She sat on the edge of her bed every morning. In eight months, she called me up. She goes, the edge of this mattress has just collapsed. I just sink right down to the box springs. Well, that's because the plastic foam gave up. Plastic foam does not last. I sold one of those Dormia mattresses to a man that weighed about 400 pounds. 
I'm guessing. I don't know. Uh, he was huge. He wore down one year. He called me up. He slept in a king size all by himself. He says, this, other, this side where I sleep is nice and soft. If I roll over to the middle of the other side, it's just like it was when it was new. One year. Eight months and sitting in, on the side of a mattress. They'd give up. This is the nature of plastic polyurethane foam. But the reason the mattress industry uses it is because it's dirt cheap. It's, it's pennies. It, literally, you can make a whole mattress out of polyurethane foam for less than 100 bucks. They sell it to you. Here's the gimmicks. They sell it to you. This is the latest technology in sleep. Our new gel-infused memory foam. Okay, let me tell you something about gel-infused memory foam. I used to sell a, big, a brand name uh, named Rustonic. And the, the, uh, the uh, sales rep who had, he was my sales rep when I first got started. He ended up uh, becoming the sales manager of the whole corporation. But anyway, I still talk to him. I call him. And when I would call him, I'd ask him a few questions about mattresses or whatever. And I would ask him about how the business is doing. You know, since he's a large corporation, if his business is doing bad, it kind of told me if my business is doing bad, okay, well, the whole industry is doing bad. Or if he's doing great and I'm doing bad, I must be doing something wrong. So I, I would always ask him those questions. And uh, I'll never forget one response. He said, oh, we're doing really, really good. We've got a lot of new products out that's really hitting the uh, ground running. Uh, we've got a new gel foam that's really doing well for us. And I was on real good terms with this guy. And I said, Mark, give me the, give me the lowdown. What's the big deal about gel memory foam? He says, it's just something to talk about. In other words, it's marketing. It's just a marketing gimmick. They say it's gel infused to make the memory foam cold, cooler. Well, a gel pack, if you warm it up to your body heat, it's going to hold the heat. So the gel foam is not going to make it cooler. If anything, it's going to hold the heat. But it, it convinces you, the consumer, the gel is cooler. Well, when you feel gel in a, in a room temperature by hand, it's going to feel cool to you. Okay, So it's a marketing gimmick. The whole industry is nothing but marketing gimmicks. They lie, 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 lie. Okay, well, all right, now that I've taught you about the marketing gimmicks and the cheap materials, let me show you what good material is, okay? Now, in the mattress retail business, when I sell a mattress, I deliver the mattresses I sell and haul off the used mattresses. And occasionally, I run across somebody that had a latex mattress. Now, what is latex? Latex is the sap of a tree. It's not plastic. It's real rubber. The plastic... Um, is, you know, in the industry because it's dirt cheap, you, the, the rubber, you get about a pint a day out of a mature tree. So you can imagine it takes a lot of little cups of rubber uh, to make a full uh, a queen or king size mattress. So they're very expensive. And by the way, the latex only grows in certain areas of the world in tropical rainforest type conditions. Whereas plastic foam is petrochemical product. We just get the oil out of the ground and make plastics out of it, okay? So one's expensive, one's cheap. But let me show you the durability of latex. And, and by the way, before I even show you this, let me tell you why I documented the, the durability of latex. See, I was in the business for a couple of years, and I began to realize these plastic, gimmicky mattresses don't last. So I brought in latex. I was learning that latex was a lot more durable. And of course, I didn't know any better. I brought in brand name latex by Restonic. And I had to learn the hard way. They're not made the way latex mattresses were made 40 and 50 years ago. But anyway, I had a man come in. When he pulled into my parking lot and he got out of his truck, I could see through the glass windows. I was like, gosh, I better not sell this man anything but latex because if he buys anything else, he's going to destroy. He was big this way. He was big this way. He was a mountain of a man. So when he walked in the door, I said, well, what can I help you with? He says, I'm looking for the cheapest mattress you got. And of course, when people say that, you realize they're probably buying something for their spare bedroom. So I took him over to some cheap mattresses that I had, and uh, I said, what size do you need? And he said, king. And I'm thinking, yeah, most people don't buy kings for their spare bedroom. So I asked him, I said, is this for your use? He said, yeah. And I'm thinking, man, we're going in the wrong direction because this man's going, this big man is going to destroy this cheap mattress in no time, six months. He's going to cuss me. So I said to him, said, sir, may I be very frank with you? He said, by all means. I said, well, I sell a lot of mattresses to a lot of people. I said, you're larger than the average consumer. And I can tell you this mattress that you're looking at is not going to last a, a year, not even a year under your weight. He said, I know. 
I buy no new mattress every year. I bought cheap mattresses. I bought expensive mattresses. The cheap ones last no longer, or the, the expensive ones last no longer than the cheap ones. So I've just resigned myself to buying a new cheap mattress every year. And so I said, well, actually, you need to know about latex. You've obviously never been introduced to latex. Latex is not, the, the problem is the plastic foam in the mattresses that's not holding up. Latex is a, a different animal altogether. It's the sap of a tree. Now, as you can imagine, he's gun shy. He said he's bought expensive mattresses. Who wants to spend $3,000 on a mattress to have it get huge dips in it and, and do it again in a year when you can buy a $500 mattress every year? Okay, that's the way he's thinking and it's understandable. So he wanted proof that latex was as durable as I was claiming, but I had no way to prove it. And of course, without proof, he's not gonna spend you know, to, uh, at the time, a king size mattress, I think it was $2,400. He wasn't going to spend $2,400 on that latex mattress. So I didn't get his sale. But since I met him, I realized I need proof that latex is that durable. So let me show you my proof. When I deliver mattresses, I sell. I haul off the used mattress case. I run across the latex mattress. The very first one I picked up that I documented, the law label here says latex rubber foam. All new material consisting of latex rubber foam. Uh, made by Sears Roebuck and Company. Isn't that interesting? Well, anyway, I was standing in this woman's driveway and I turned to her and her husband. I cut the law label off with my pocket knife and I said, um, how long do you think you've had this latex mattress? She and her husband discussed it. She goes, I'm pretty sure we bought that in 1965. So I said, ma'am, would you be kind enough to write me a testimonial that you had the mattress 41 years? So she did and wrote me a mattress 41 years she bought in 1965. 41 years on a latex mattress. And let me tell you something, the only reason she replaced it is because the cover material had a worn hole in it. But people don't go buy new mattresses unless the one they've got's not sleeping well. If it sleeps well, you just keep it for 41 years. It's very simple to understand. The next one I picked up didn't have a law label on it, so I poured the, pour, I poured the little, I pulled the little corner label off the mattress. Notice it was another Sears. In Roanoke in 1960, there was only one place to buy mattresses in Roanoke probably was at Sears, okay? So that's why I run into a lot of Sears. Notice this five inch thick foam latex mattress. I said, ma'am, how long do you think you've had this mattress? She goes, well, I bought that about the time my son was born. He's 35 now. So 35 years on that one. Uh, this one, when I picked it up, it didn't have a law label on it. I mean, it didn't have a, a I didn't get a testimonial. I'm sorry, I didn't get a testimonial. But the law label says all new material consisting of latex rubber foam. But the price tag was stitched into the corner uh, the corner label on the mattress, $79.75. $0.75. Like if it had been $0.80, cents, it had been too much. <laughs> um, $0.75 cents for, you know, and latex is an expensive mattress even back then. So you can imagine how long ago that was. That's probably a 50-year-old mattress. Anyway, I've got several people that have written me testimonials when I run into this. Dot Poindexter wrote me in 2007. She said, 1952, my husband and I purchased our first Englander foam rubber mattress. We replaced this mattress 39 years later. It was still in excellent condition. There were no indentations, so it had no body impressions in it. And it's still as firm as the day we bought it, so it hadn't softened. The, mat the latex does not body impress. It does not soften. That was Dot Poindexter. Uh, John and Marilyn Seitz. Uh, we moved our in our we moved into our house in February '69. We bought a king size latex mattress from Sears. It has been a very comfortable latex mattress for 41 years. It's lasted through several uh, lasted through three sons and several dogs and cats. Our old latex mattress was a five inch thick. Uh, uh, our old mattress was a five inch thick latex. It was comfortable until the end. So it was comfortable for for 41 years. Um, and then uh, this is. This is one of the longest ones. Now, I had several people tell me that they had their latex mattress. They swore 50 years. This woman documented it. Notice it says at the top of the email, she wrote me Saturday, May 4th, 2013. To pay attention to that year, 2013. She writes here, I don't have too much money, but still been sleeping on a very comfortable latex mattress since 1963. That's 50 years. That's how durable latex is. And so I was learning this the hard way. Get rid of the memory foam, get rid of the pillow top uh, polyurethane uh, big brand name mattresses. And I brought in latex. Now I had to learn the hard way that a whole lot of latex mattresses made today are not all latex. 
these that lasted 40 years were nothing but latex. In fact, I picked them up, I cut them open and look inside, it was nothing in it but latex. The Restonic brand that I brought in, you remember me telling you about the foam encasement around this, uh, around this coil system? I mean, the reason, the reason they foam encase it is reduce the amount of springs they use. It's cheaper to make that way. And then they spin it to you as if they made you a firm sitting edge, okay? Remember that? Well, they foam encase the latex. Well, plastic is a whole lot cheaper than latex, so if you use less latex, it it's, keeps the price down. I also had to learn the hard way that those mattresses, those latex mattresses, had polyurethane as upholstery, two, two and a half inches of upholstery on each side of the latex. So it had latex in the middle, polyurethane on both sides. They thicken it with the cheap stuff because they know if it's all latex and it's nine or 10 inches thick, you can't afford it. At least not, not, at least not a traditional manufactured mattress sold at the retail level. It gets really expensive. So I decided, well, I, the only, you know, it's the old adage, if you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. So I decided to start producing my own mattresses. And I got the natural latex mattress, nothing but the sap of a tree, no polyurethane foam, no foam encase, no, no gimmicks. And that's when the fire retardant regulations went into effect, right? Eight months after I got started. So I, gosh, I, I'm just getting started in this. Now I gotta make my mattress flame retardant. And that's how I learned about the chemicals. Luckily, there was a loophole in the law that says if a doctor prescribes chemical-free mattresses, then I could legally keep selling you my mattresses. Because I, did, I didn't want to sell mattresses with fire retardant chemicals in them. But I did that for several, many, many years, uh, running into people that couldn't get prescriptions. So that's why I now, I no longer sell mattresses. I sell materials for you to make your own mattress. It's a way of dancing around the idiotic, despotic, toxic regulations so that you can get exactly what you want and I can keep the price down, okay? Now, if you'll peruse around my buildyourownmattress.com, I'm gonna teach you about how they're made, but I'm gonna give you a real quick lesson on latex. This is, this is a piece of latex. Latex is formed in six inch slabs, natural latex. Uh, well, let me back up a minute. There's two different kinds of latex and there's two different ways of making it into foam. There's natural sap of a tree latex that's made into foam, and then there's synthetic blended. Man's done got smart and figured out how to, weigh, how to make synthetic latex to get that price back down. These old mattresses that lasted 40 years, they were the real sap of a tree. I had to learn the hard way when I started producing my own mattresses, to, and I started using a synthetic blended latex. And, you know, I sold one to my own mother, and guess what? I had to replace it because it got a dip in it. Synthetic latex is not as durable as the real McCoy sap of a tree. You want 100% pure sap of a tree, and that's what I sell. Natural rubber. Not only that, the natural rubber you get from me is certified organic. Now, that's fairly important, but let me give you a de little detail on latex. A, a whole lot of natural latex is not made in the area in which it's grown. Like I mentioned before, latex is grown in tropical rainforest area. Now, most of latex is coming from Sri Lanka, which is just south of Asia, uh, I mean, just south of India. Okay, <clears throat> now that latex, they form there, or they can, they can put it in barrel. They can take the, just the raw sap, put it in barrels, and ship it to some factory in North America or in Europe. A whole lot of latex is coming from Belgium. You may hear Belgium latex, okay? But in order for that sap to survive on hot and cold ships all the way to Europe, they have to put ammonia in the barrel to keep the latex from hardening and coagulating, okay? So even though you can get an all-natural latex product, it may have been treated with ammonia. Now, I'm sure in the baking process, the ammonia disappears, it evaporates, okay? But if you're somebody who wants natural and doesn't want it messed with, certified organic, Global organic latex standard is what we do. It's 100% the sap of a tree. It's not been treated with ammonia. It's formed in Sri Lanka. It comes to us from Sri Lanka. Now they're all formed in six inch layers. And what we sell are three inch layers. 
So a three inch layer is a six inch that's been sliced in half. And uh, I elaborate on why we sell them in three inches. Our mattresses are, uh, our materials are three inch layers. You put them together, you buy them, put them together, put the cover over them, makes you a mattress. I didn't sell you a mattress, I just sold you materials. Materials aren't regulated on the Consumer Product Safety Commission. If I sell you a, a mattress, if I'm a licensed bedding producer and I sell you mattresses, it's got to have fire retardant chemicals or you have to have a prescription. Um, now what happens, I want to teach you a little bit about latex because every once in a while somebody buys latex from me and they're like, oh, this just, just doesn't look like it's quality. Latex does not look, look quality. It's a raw material. It's a primitive process. It's been around a long time. Now that's a Dunlop. Now, by the way, if you want certified organic, it's only going to come by the Dunlop process. There's no such thing as a towel-like processed pure latex. So not certified organic, okay? 90 to 95% of all towelates produced in the world is a synthetic blend. And it's typically 70% synthetic, 30% natural. All right, now I want to show you a few things about latex because every once in a while I get somebody that buys this latex from me and buys a cover for a mattress to make their own mattress. They get the latex and they complain. The latex doesn't look, uh, looks cheap. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a raw product. It's, it's, you know, it's funny because you go buy a mattress at a mattress store and it's all sewn shut. It can be dirty foam inside of it because it's sewn shut. You don't know that you're sleeping on dirty foam. When you get this, you actually get to see what is in your mattress. Now, I think I've already mentioned latex is poured in six inch slabs and everything I sell you is a three inch slab. Well, three inches comes from a six inch that's been sliced in half. So, you're going to have holes on one side and the other side you're not going to have holes. And occasionally somebody goes, this doesn't look right, it's, it doesn't look the same. Which, you know, it looks like you gave me a piece of junk slab of foam. All latex is like this, okay? <laughs> it's all like this. Um, you're going to see the holes don't go all the way through. You're also going to see air bubbles. You, know, you see at the, at the very uh, uh, entrance of this hole, there's a little divot in each hole. Well, that's an air bubble. You know, this starts out as a liquid. They pour it into this mold and all these pins are sticking up in the mold. The purpose of the pins is to transfer heat to the middle of the, the sap, foamy, frothy stuff and causes it to bake evenly. I mean, you wouldn't want the outside to be baked and the inside to be raw. Uh, the pins make it bake evenly. Well, when they pour this rubber into the mold, the little air bubbles are around each pin. So it, does, it doesn't, it's not beautiful. It's not perfect. Now, if you ever see a towel a piece of latex, a towel a piece of latex is near perfect because they suck all the air out of it, which causes the froth to fill up inside the mold perfectly. And then when it comes out of the mold, it's beautiful. Dunlop latex is a little more raw, uh, unrefined, unfinished looking. It has nothing to do with the quality. Okay. Now, occasionally you will get a piece of foam that will have a a uh, two inch, one inch, maybe even as big as a three inch little rip in it. Uh, it's fairly easy to rip. Um, and of course, when they're pulling this latex out of the mold, sometimes it'll get little rips. It does not mean you've got an inferior product. Probably one in five pieces of foam are going to have little rips. Uh, it's all inspected. If it has a big enough rip to be a problem, we don't ship it. If it's a little bitty rip, we know it's not a problem. You may get one that's got a little rip in it. Uh, like I said, one in five, it may even be uh, two in five pieces of foam have little rips in it. Don't pay any attention to that. Put it together. You will, you will love the way this mattress performs. You'll love the way it supports. The holes allow it to be breathable so it's not hot. Uh, you're building your own mattress so that you don't have to sleep in chemicals. You don't have to be the victim of the tyranny of our Consumer Product Safety Commission that does not represent you and doesn't give a rat's rear end about you. Uh, you do not have to sleep in plastic mattresses. These plastic foam manufacturers make a ton of money off of statistics. They know statistically speaking uh, they make money even though 25% of the customers send the dumb thing back. Okay, And then you end up buying a mattress that's only going to last one to two years and you throw it away. And then, and then you're sleeping in toxic chemicals for, to boot which they don't tell you anything about, okay? I hope this, this um, video has been informative and educational. 
listen, we have three locations, physical um, showroom locations, one in Roanoke, Virginia, one in Richmond, Virginia, one in Raleigh, North Carolina. If you live near those areas, I encourage you to make the drive. I've had people drive from Canada. I've had people drive from Indiana, Florida. Uh, I've had a man drive from Texas. Uh, I know those are extremes, but if you live two, or th two hours away, it's worth your drive to go get a quality mattress, figure out what firmness you like. Now, if you live in California and you want one of my mattresses, peruse my website, build your own mattress. I'm going to teach you how to choose a mattress. Which one is right for you? Which firmness? Uh, I make four... I don't make, I'm sorry. I, I arrange and recommend four different arrangements of four different firmness models. One of those is probably going to work for you. I explain that in more detail on my website, buildyourownmattress.com, okay? If you're not there, go there. Listen, thank you so much for watching. This is your, this is an abbreviated. Let me tell you something. I can stand here for four hours telling you about the mattress industry. I can tell you stories, uh, more marketing gimmicks, more plastic foam junk gimmicks, more lies, articles, I could read article after article and point out where they're lying to you. Look at this one right here real quick. Bedding Today. Bedding Today is a publication put out for furniture and mattress industry. Uh, this is David Perry, executive editor of, of, um, of this magazine. He says, time to set the record straight. FR Solutions deemed safe. Well, it's, his article is right beside a Tempur-Pedic ad. Do you think he's going to tell the truth that mattress manufacturers' mattresses are toxic? He'd run off all of his advertisers. <laughs> I love pointing that stuff out, okay? Um, and I would do it for four hours. The stuff that's going on in the industry is rotten. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to educate you. Some people are saying I'm using scare taxes, uh, tactics. I'm convinced I've not told the public enough. Uh, the mattress industry is a rotten dirty, rotten, filthy industry. Our government has facilitated much of it. Uh, the rest is manufacturers making you an inferior product and spin it to use a superior product. Now that's the bigger the brand name, the bigger the junk. Let's just put it that way. We also have an 855 number, 855-502-8453. Uh, give us a call. We've got several uh, salespeople that will uh, answer and uh, answer you any questions you have. If you happen to not reach us, just leave a voicemail. We will call you right back very shortly. Sometimes the phones, it's kind of funny. Everybody calls at one time. Everybody shops at one time. So sometimes the phones get really, really busy. Uh, just leave a voicemail. Uh, we ship all over the country. You can order online. You're going to be ordering one of, you're going to be ordering three layers of latex to complete your mattress. There's different densities. I explain all the densities. It's a, it's a video rich website where I explain each density and what you need to do. Just keep in mind you need three layers to complete a mattress and you need a cover. That pretty much covers it all. Like I said, we ship all over the continental United States and shipping is free. There's extra charges for shipping to Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. Uh, besides that, we don't ship around the country, around the earth. Uh, but certainly would like to earn your business. Please share my video with your friends. Uh, the public needs to know that the industry is rotten to the core. Um, make you an inferior product, spin it to you as if it's a superior product, full of toxic chemicals, and they're claiming they're trying to make you uh, uh, a safe mattress from or save you from mattress fires. It's a bunch of nonsense. Thank you so much for watching.